What's up everybody? Captain Matt here. Today's gonna be part two of a dockside chat with Captain Bruce going over trot lines. Uh, these are just gonna be his thoughts and experiences and uh, knowledge on trot lines. This video is not sponsored by Captain Bruce. Just he happened to uh, let me sit down and record a conversation with him when I was doing documentation for another video. If there is somebody else you'd like to see as part of the dockside chat series just let me know and drop a comment down below cue the intro and then we'll get to the audio i added some drone footage in just to make things interesting while you listen hope you enjoy Most people ask, uh, what's the difference in trout lines? Yes. Okay. Everyone. Now, there's there's basically main line difference, and there's also snood difference, and then there's spacing difference. It's spacing, right. And I'm more, I mean, I'm excited about space, obviously spacing, but like the different diameters and the yeah, different, the different diameter. characteristics to go with. Right. There's a lot of... There's a lot of benefits for the thin main line. They call it the number five or the number six, which is like three sixteenths of an inch diameter. Number one is it takes up very little space. So if they're if you're running a commercial line and you have three thousand feet of line, you can put three thousand feet in a basket. You can't put three thousand feet of number eight or that's the positives. The negative is it's not user friendly. It if you start getting a little knot in it, it turns into a knot. I mean, if you get a spider webbed in it, it turns into a knot almost instantly. And then you end up cutting a line or throwing it away because it won't come untangled. So is that more around the diameter, the material, or yeah, the three strand versus the diameter, solid? Well, it's a diameter and, like I said, the, the, uh, their technique on using it. There's a lot of commercial guys that use it day in and day out. They have no problem. They put it in a 55-gallon uh, yeah, drum. Yeah. yeah, they do it every day, and they have no problem. But I'm talking about the, you know, the the guy that's only really going to go out a few times a week or a few times a month. Most of the time, it's not user friendly. So that and that's more around the smaller diameter. Yeah, the smaller diameter. So when you get to the larger diameter, like the number A or the quarter three strand. Now that's a lot more user friendly, especially when you get into the medium lay. Because if you start getting a loop or something out of the basket, usually if you shake it, it the knot falls right out. So it's a lot more user friendly. But the downside of that is it takes up a lot more space. You're only dealing with six or 1200 foot, it doesn't matter. But there again, if you're dealing with three, four, 5,000 feet, like a lot of commercial guys do that's running a living, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So. That's the difference between the two, and then the cost factor is a part of it too. You know, the thinner line is half the diameter and half the so price. So all the solid stuff, basically the, every different type's all just nylon then, right? You definitely yeah. not sink it in. It's, it's almost, well, Loctite's a difference. very popular, right? Okay. Loctite line. Well, let me tell you, Loctite is popular because it's cheap, right? but it's garbage rope. It's more like a closed line because it doesn't have a float. It's not a sinking line. If you take a piece of Loctite and throw it in the water, it floats. Then what happens, because what it has, it's got, a fi it's got a fiber core, and it's got a jacket spun around it. So a couple things happen. Number one is that fiber core has to absorb water to make it heavier than water, and then it'll start to sink. The problem is, you never know if it's going down to the bottom. bottom. And that's where the crabs are, so you got to put extra weights and all that stuff. I won't even sell Loctite, and I've had the salesman stop every day year year after year i mean i can give you a good price i said i don't sell junk i said that's not good crabbing line you take any of my line you cut it it's all synthetic it's either polyester or nylon and it's solid all the way through it's solid all the way through and it's fl and it sinks you throw it in the water no matter where you put right to the bottom all the way it's to got the a bottom. brand name or now it just no, yep it's just uh anything even this stuff here is so it's is, solid versus it's core. solid versus a the core. fiber fill the, the core and you get into Loctite and Franklin and all that stuff. It all has it all has the um, the core. 
Now this one here, it shows you a little bit. Now this is some of the cheaper crab pot wires, that white stuff in the middle. Right. Yeah, you look at the other stuff, well, you can't see that very well, but if you look at the solid, it's, it's the same color. It doesn't have two different types. It's just, it's just solid all the way through. Right. So it's just basically the weed between the two. So, and then the last thing is the snoods. I mean, the thin snoods are basically if you're using a light bait, like uh, bull lips, salted eel, chicken necks. Uh, they're a little easier to bait. Put the bait in there, pull it up real quick. No problems at all. The drawback is if you're using a winder and thin snoods, they stretch a lot when you fling them. You know, they'll be flinging stuff oh, yeah, all over. Yeah, they'll be flinging all over the place. So that's when most people that are running heavier weights, I mean heavier bait like uh, clams, they'll use the thicker snoods so they don't have the stretch that the thin ones do. They're a little bit harder to bait, but they also work well for smaller baits if you want to use a smaller bait. So the whole purpose of a snood is to minimize balance, right? Okay, the, no, no, let me tell you the purpose or, of a snood. You might be surprised. Back in the day when you were a kid, you remember the two tin cans and the piece of string yeah. that you put between and you would communicate and right. talk and the you would get the vibration would go from one to the other? That's what happens with a trout line. If you tie your bait directly on the line, when that crab down there eating and that line's going up and down and going over your prop stick and all this mechanical noise that's going down that line, that crab feels it. The bigger, smarter, right jumbo crab. i mean that's the rest of them getting spooked yeah right? that's so they're sitting there nice. eating all of a sudden they feel something they're not comfortable with they just let go and drop off so now what a snood does the reason it's made it's like out of bungee cord and not string a lot of people put string on their snoods to save money on bungee cord but they're defeating the purpose right because it actually breaks that mechanical noise so the crab doesn't feel it it goes, it, it's absorbed like a miniature shock absorber right in the snake. Right, versus a line would just keep transmitting. Exactly the right. So they're feeling all of a sudden, the, bot, the bottom line is you're just pulling many more crabs to the surface because less are dropping off. Plus they're a little easier to bait than they are when you got to tie them direct and do all that kind of stuff. But yes, that's, that's the whole too. purpose yep. of a snood, a snood line. Back in the day when only commercial guys ran snood lines, that was the reasoning, but most people thought that it was just because it was easier to bait. That's not it, because they were just catching more crabs. They would do their tests and their comparison, you know, running side by side with their existing tie-on lines. But back then, there was an abundance of crabs. So if you had one drop off, two more jumped on. Right. But them days are gone. Yeah. You don't have them like nah, that anymore. not at all. Um, what else? And then different lengths. I mean, what, why would oh, people the spacing? prefer? Now, the length is new. Some people like the oh, six. Some people like 12. That's all personal preference because anything over about uh, two or three inches is just wasted snood. I mean, they can tangle. Some, it depends yeah, that's on... That's the worst. Yeah, problems, some, yeah. Sometimes they're too long. You know, sometimes... If they're too short, you can't get them open enough to get your bait in. So all you have to do is open up enough to be able to get your bait in and pull it up tight, and that's really all you need. Any more else, anything else is more of a tangle. But I've had guys that run 18-inch nudes, yeah, and, and they're used to it. Their gear set up, they can run it, and they think that's best. But yeah, to me, personal. it's only an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> It's like the old domino theory. So with the, when you attach snoods to the saw line, you hog tie them? Or? Well, if there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's some guys that like to hog ring them, but that defeats the purpose again. What it does, it, cre it, it allows you to make a smaller knot that when it comes up over your roller or something, less you don't, yeah, yeah, less bouncing. Um, but what it does is if you're pulling it in by hand, next thing you know, you start getting your hand all cut up because you got pieces of metal. metal. And plus, if it goes over a metal roller, you're hearing all that that metal noise. It's not necessary. You know, I've been tying mine on with a slip knot, same way the old right. timers tied their bait on. Now, can you do that with solid too? Yeah. 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 No matter what it is, I just solid put it right in the slip knot, and then the only thing that does is makes the knot a little larger. But they don't move, they don't slip, and then you know, if you need to replace them, you can replace them. Right. But if you have you have that and come and with the uh, with a ramp, like you just picked up there, that knot doesn't matter because you still get smooth transaction coming up that ramp. But if you're going around something like a small, you got them J-hooks, them real cheap yep. hook thing. When it's on that thing, you, this thing, you're just sitting there bouncing like that. Next thing you know, you see your line going like up that. Down, yeah. You know you're shaking the crabs off. 
And then one type of cord stretches more than another, right? The well, it's, yeah, there, there's different grades of stretch. I mean, different grades of the shock cord. I thought I read, well, I thought the main line, I thought I read like solid versus three strand, like one or different ways of materials that like one has a tendency to stretch a little more than another. Or... Yeah, if it's under a big load. This stuff, if you deal with a number eight, you're not going to you're not going to notice a stretch when you just put a little bit, you know, right. twenty or thirty pounds of tension on a trout line because with the weights on the end, you're not going to notice that. So you know, good quality line, it's going to it's going to stay taut if you set it taut if you got a good anchoring system. If you don't, it doesn't matter. But you're not going to break that line. Matter of fact, I was telling you I was cutting tree. I mean, I had a tree fall over uh, from the last storm. And I had a tree that was uh, probably, what is that, 18 inches in diameter. And I cut it up in three sections. And I used my number eight solid braid rope, tied it up, and put my truck. My truck wouldn't even pull it in two-wheel drive. I put it in four-wheel drive. And I just pulled it with that, you know, number eight crab yep. line. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about it stretching or breaking. or any, I don't know what the tensile strength is, but it's plenty more than you ever need crabbing. Right. The other thing is a double knot. Yeah, that's a double knot, which basically locks the rubber in place. Well, no, they're different size. When you do a double knot, you can actually use a larger size hose, which makes it easier to slip. That's why it's called a... uh, I guess it's important to pair the proper size to this. And there's three or four different sizes out there because the different manufacturing has different diameter line, which affects which size rubber hose you want to use. It's got to be, it's got to be large enough that the knot pulls pretty easy. So when you bait it, it's not really hard to bait, but it's got enough, got to have enough gripping action to actually hold taunt right, the bait in place so it doesn't fall yeah. out, or the clam bag. So there's a, you know, there's a fine line in there what to use. I have a lot of uh, customers that make their own and they end up buying them because they use they lose half their baits at first. So I know you even sell the kits to make them yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, what, like, what's the labor? Like, what do you charge the people labor to put a six hundred well, foot it's together? Like, yeah, to do a hundred of them, I charge I charge like twenty cents a piece to make them for you. Just the snood. Yeah, just to make a snood. Right, but then you sell the kits too, the trout line. Yeah, kit? the trout line kits. You, I mean, for like general, like, bucks. Yeah, it's like forty bucks of twelve hundred foot line. Is what I charge labor to. And that includes everything. Like, what's the profit margin in a? Well, yeah, line? I mean, no. All it is is if you buy the snoods pre-made, you know, it's snoods Obviously are pre-made. That, yes. So all you really have to do is tie them up. Right. So you know, and that's uh, and and that's probably only a twenty dollar difference between the two. I don't know the prices off the top of my head because you can look them all. Yeah, I'll you can look through there. How long did it take you to make the one that well, I never even looked into? I, that I can tell. I'll tell you that story too. The, the first snood line I ever made. My wife and I went to Canada to go skiing. She's a snowbird, and she skied all her life, and I never did ski, never liked it, never. So we went up to, uh, like I said, up to Canada for a week vacation. So I took my uh, trout line stuff up, and I was going to make it in a in the uh, hotel while she was out skiing. So I started playing around from scratch. I didn't have anything pre-made. I had to cut the rubber hose. I had to cut these the uh, shock cord. I had to burn the shock cords on both ends, otherwise it's unraveled and all that yeah. stuff. And I had to tie it all up and do all that stuff. Anyway, make a long story short, it took me 12 hours to make my first 1200 foot trout line from scratch. From scratch, including from, the bus snoods. Yeah, and... everything. I had to pre-make everything and I just timed what I took. And I wasn't racing, you know, trying to beat the right. clock. It was just a casual 12 hour type thing, not a continuous you know, two hours a day. Right, sitting there, total. not distracted. Yeah, 12 hours in total. And uh, at the time, I told my wife, I said, you know what, this is such a pain, I'll never make another one of these. And here here I am, <laughs> I've, I've made thousands of them since then. But now I've got it set up, so, you know, it's uh, quite honestly, it takes probably... I mean, you turn mine around pretty quick. Oh, yeah, I, I can make a snood line in an hour. A whole 1200 foot, yeah, nice. Have it finished from beginning to end, including the snoods, or yeah, snoods oh. are already pre made. Oh, yeah. snoods are pre made, yeah. They're all not made. I, I learned. Let's talk about the medium lay versus soft lay, hard lay, yeah, soft I, lay, medium lay. Um, I don't know any manufacturer that specifically calls their line soft lay, medium lay, or I don't even know what the next term is between that 
everybody basically calls it soft lay, so I let them call it whatever they want to call it. The, the difference is... Is there a measurement? No. Well, I'm sure... I don't know. You might have to look that up and see what designates it as soft to a medium. But from a crabber's point of view, is how does it handle when you start to roll it up? Like and coil how, bill... I, there, there's a term on the forum they were used. I don't know if that's even the proper form, but they're basically the way... Whether coil it coils lays flat, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, there's a lot of people that have their own techniques and opinions and all that stuff and uh you know it basically is does how does it roll how does it go into a lay into a basket and how does it come out of the basket so you know the soft stuff is is so soft that it's basically the soft lay is almost like a a cottony uh a cottony fiber that's too soft because it wants it, it wants to catch on everything, and when it starts catching, it starts to fall, it starts pulling pieces of the the line out. So before you know it, yes. you know it's not quarter inch anymore. It's got it's got weak areas in it. But the medium lay is all you need because that's where you want. And there's a big difference between uh, medium lay made in the U.S. and medium lay made in China and anywhere in China yeah. or North most. Some of somewhere. the other stuff that some of the cheaper stuff is made in North Vietnam. I mean, uh, South Viet Vietnam. Yeah, in Vietnam, probably North Vietnam. But anyway, I had a bunch of uh, customers that tried that because you could get a twelve hundred foot roll for like uh, thirty bucks. But the problem is when you went to put it in your, you brought it into your winder and you went to put it in your basket. This thing would shoot in like six foot lengths. It wouldn't it wouldn't coil up right. into a basket. I mean, it was just like long, stiff stuff. Yes, but it, you can get used to anything. I mean, like I said, I had some guys that don't have much money and they use old, you know, clothesline rope. Yep. And that's the cool thing about crap. A lot of it's yeah. DUI or DIY, like you do it yourself, like it's not building a rod and reel. And, and the old guys, you know, back in the old days, they used tarred, uh, tarred um, cotton rope. See, the cotton wouldn't sink by itself. Right. So what they did was they took tar and they wiped, the cot wiped that on, and you could buy tarred rope i mean that's all they use it was like uh the same stuff that we use on the door lines it was only like the little thin one eighth inch diameter and they just put their you know their salsa deal on it and that's what they use for a trout line for almost 100 years before we started getting into the, the more better quality line because they didn't sell line back then plus they only use what they had available but they just take regular like pipe string and they just dip it in tar and let the tar dry and what what that would do would make it heavier than uh it wouldn't absorb the water and then it would just sink so that's what they wanted so they want to get down to the bottom all right that's gonna be it for this dockside chat hope you enjoyed it like i said before if you got someone in mind who you'd like to see as part of this dockside chat series why don't you drop a comment down below and if you enjoy this content please hit that like and subscribe button until next time i'll catch you later